Okay, you may begin. Call this meeting, special meeting to order. First item is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the agenda for this evening. Is there a second? I second the motion. Board members, please vote. Um, Board Chair Byman. Byron? Yes. Vice Chair Brooks-Buck? Yes. Member Jenkins? Yes. Member Mayo? Yes. Member Mitnick? Yes. Member Reddick? Yes. Member Story? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, next, we need uh, new business, Dr. Gordon and Ms. Forsman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we wanted to take the time today for our official budget adoption as a follow-up to our original budget presentation in February and the approval of the budget by the board shortly thereafter. Um, as you know, based on the documents that have been uploaded to ESB and, and also sent to you all, there has had to be an adjustments in our proposed budget for the things that we would like to have done to bring Suffolk Public Schools closer to the future and closing some gaps that we noticed across the school division. Um, as we begin to get started, I definitely want to give credit and kudos to Ms. Forsman and the budget and finance team for their hard work. Uh, this was plan C, as I've shared in conversations with you all, uh, where we had to make budget adjustments based on uh, only receiving 1.5 million from the city, also a $2 million uh, deficit coming from the state caused us to have to pull some things out of the budget in order to still have some high priority items that we're gonna be able to make it for the 2020-2021 school year. So uh, with that being said, Madam Chair and board members, I will turn it over to Ms. Forsman for the general presentation. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, good evening. We are going to discuss this evening the budget, the changes to the budget. Thank you. Yeah. All right, here's the arrow. We can do this. All right, so there were some budget challenges. So there are some budget challenges that come with the COVID-19. And um, you can see here that the state revenue reductions included, uh, there's several state revenue reductions from this that the state put in their final budget that the governor signed. Uh, the city appropriation request that we had put in our approved budget uh, was significantly lowered by the city council. Uh, sales tax estimates were not revised for the 2020-21 fiscal year, but are expected to be significantly lower than projected. And then the supplementary lottery, get that out, lottery supplementary per pupil funding was suspended current year and possibly into the new year. So the state budget reductions include removing the 2% state raise for employees, which was $1.18 million. They removed the additional funding for school counselors. So the school counselors will remain at the same SOQ as current year. And that's $275,270. They reduced the additional at-risk funding they gave um, us in the original budget by $338,776. And they reduced the additional pre-K money that they had given us about $270,508. For the city, we had proposed $3.9 million as our request. The city reduced that by 2.4 million and they uh, approved a 1.5 million additional appropriation request to us. Uh, they voted, of course, May 20th to do that. So together, you can see that we our approved budget had an increase of 9.8 million. Uh, we reduced the city appropriation and the state funding by
by $4.3 million together, then the remaining funds are $5.4 million. So this is what the revenue looks like. You can see here that the state revenue increases $3.9 million, the city appropriation $1.5, and federal miscellaneous revenue stayed the same. So our increase to revenue is $5.4 million. This is what it looks like graphically. You can see that the state revenue remains close to 60% or 59.36%. The city appropriation is close to 40%, 39.35%, and uh, federal and other funds remain under 1%. So the focused investment part of our budget did not change. We still are providing uh, students uh, investments through the CARES Act, teachers, support staff, and the SPS efficiency and effectiveness are also still uh, in part in the budget. We had to make some changes, but all of these are still our focus for this coming year's budget. So the recommended changes uh, to the approved budget would include reductions to raises for the raises that we had planned for staff. So the raises that we had uh, previously presented to you, we've had to reduce those down and we'll show you what that is in a few slides, but we've had to reduce those down uh, in order to get back down to the $5.4 million. And we had to delay some parts of the SPS efficiency and effectiveness plan to next year. So the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Other changes to the approved budget uh, we removed most of the new positions. We will delay those until our 21-22 request. Most uh, of the student-focused expenses that will go to the CARES Act, those that qualify, because there are some qualifications to that. So if it can qualify for that, we'll move it there. And then we reduced or eliminated equipment replacements that did not qualify for the CARES Act. So our investment in teachers, of course, as you know, we had hoped to have our starting scale at 46,000. We've had to reduce it to 45,000 for a starting salary. Uh, the changes here are in red, just so everyone's aware. Um, experienced teachers, the increase, uh, we go from 29 years to 34 years, we left that in, but it's reduced down just like the 45,000, reduced down to 75,379. Uh, we still have the equal percentage increase between steps, uh, and it is still the same scale style that was reviewed by the teachers and approved in that November 18th meeting. Uh, we also reduced our uh, instructional technology resource teachers, instead of two positions, we're only doing one position. Uh, however, we left your professional learning budget the same. Investments in support staff, the full-time support raise is, as proposed here is 1% cost of living adjustment across the board for all full-time support staff and permanent part-time would receive half of that or 0.5%, which has been our practice the last five years is to give them um, portion of the half portion of the raise for full-time staff. Uh, we left the nurses and nurses assistants three year three of three increase in there, as well as the coaches, uh, athletic coaches increases and the club sponsor increase or additions that we had asked for for those uh, clubs. So here are the recommended expenses to change and we start with the personnel. Teacher raises at, with the new scale are $2.9 million. The VRS increase, $748,509. Support staff, you can see here, full-time 1%, permanent part-time 0.5, both, both a cost of living adjustment, cost $264,834 for all full-time and part-time staff that are non-drivers. The driver new scale cost 260,000. The athletic coaches and club sponsors 79,515 and nurses 65,542. Again, that's year three of three for the nurses. Other changes to expense include the SPS efficiency and effectiveness. If you remember, had um, some new positions in it. We're down to two new positions. One is the director of curriculum and the other one is the receptionist position. Uh, and then there are three adjusted positions. There's one executive director to chief, an operations foreman to maintenance supervisor and a foreman one custodial service that will adjust uh, in the new year uh, with the plan according to our policies and regulations. Uh, the ITRT teacher here, you can see that's a 10 month position with benefits. The technology application specialist is a 12 month position with benefits. Uh, and then we had those permanent part time converted positions that caused a little bit of a negative there uh, to bring our net personnel investment to 1.7 
positions and $4.670. So we have a 4.6, almost 4.7 million of the 5.4 is invested in people. Other investment changes include, as you can see here in red, the red are the changes, purchase services, uh, advertising, that's almost a 50% drop in that. We removed several things out of that. Same thing with your materials and supplies. Uh, again, with the CARES Act, we were able to put some things over there. We were able to move some things around uh, and just eliminate some things uh, that we felt like could be eliminated or put off a year. Uh, of course, the cybersecurity insurance is not one of those, and we had to put the money in for that. Uh, equipment replacements were reduced down to 17521 As I stated before, the professional learning stayed the same. We removed um, the equipment additions down to $5,374. We left the materials and supplies for performing arts at 40,000. You can see the leases, uniforms, the science equipment, uh, excuse me, materials and supplies all stayed the same. Uh, additionally, we looked at the other departments. It's the very last page in your budget book. And there was 50,000 that we had put in there for equipment replacement. That was just kind of our emergency go-to place. We've also reduced that to zero in order to try to make this budget balance. Uh, and we left in the food for trains and meetings because that simply is moving it from one place to another uh, and adding for the full day meetings that we're having uh, in response to all the COVID and, and all the professional development training that we're gonna be doing. The total cost for operating costs other than personnel is $773,268. The total investment for personnel and operating costs is $5.4 million. This is what it looks like graphically. If you look at it by uh, instruction, attendance, uh, and administration, you can see administration attendance is 1.9% of our overall budget, very small percentage of the budget. Health and psychology, 1.31%. People transportation, 4.87%. Facilities is 8.76%. Food services, our food services funds make up 4.39% of the overall entire budget. And then technology makes up 4.5% at 8.2 million. So we have some other budget uncertainties that we discussed in the finance committee meeting of the board. Uh, and I just want to bring them to light one more time because we want to make sure everyone understands what's going on with them. The state did not revise their sales tax number in their budget process. We're aware it's going to be down. Our budget amount revenue for we have for state sales tax for next year is $8.3 million. And that comes to about 1.5 million monthly. The revenue shortfall we're projecting at this point based on the information we've been given by the state. And again, this is very preliminary. No one has a really good estimate, but this is about what they're saying we will be reduced by overall for next year. It's about 15%. Well, for us, that means about $2.7 million. And the state does not make that sales tax revenue up. If it falls short, we're just out that money. They don't make it up out of the general funds or basic aid or anything. We're out that money. So we have to be cognizant of that when we're looking at next year's expenses. In addition, as I said before, the supplementary lottery per pupil funding was suspended for the rest of this year. And next year's budget has $3.3 million in it for that same set of funding. We do not have information right now that the state's going to continue that suspension, but that is an unknown at this point. So if you look at the two potential shortfalls, you can see that we're looking at an additional shortfall of $6.1 million. And we're very aware of it. But we also know that these are very preliminary numbers and we don't have final estimates or anything that we really can go on to say for, for sure that we won't receive this money. So how will we address that would be with working with the city manager and city council on potential reappropriation of current year funding saved from not purchasing equipment and supplies that we would normally do at year end this year, spending or hiring freezes once the revenue is comes in actually lower and lower than we projected. So when we start seeing that we won't get that money, we'll make adjustments. And then we'll monitor carefully the economic impact of the sales tax and the revenue reports from the lottery that come out on a monthly basis at the state level to see exactly what's going on and make adjustments from there. All right, are there any questions? Any questions? Mr. Mitnick has his hand up. Mr. Mitnick? Yeah. Yes. Um, 
Could Ms. Forsman go over those two uh, positions that were left in the budget? I couldn't hear them. Oh, certainly. Um, the two that are still there are the director of curriculum and the receptionist for the superintendent's office. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Dorr? Was just what you explained, um, is that under the efficiency um, column that those two do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's the 237,000 that's showing for the efficiency and effectiveness plan. Right. Yes, that is those two plus the other three that I mentioned during my presentation. Okay. Could you just repeat that slide? It was difficult to hear you. And if you could just talk just a little slower, sure. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, can everyone see that slide? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. The SPS efficiency and effectiveness includes two new positions. That would be your director of curriculum, your receptionist, and then there are three positions that will be adjusted based on um, the duties that they're being given. One is the executive director to chief. The other is the operations foreman maintenance to supervisor two of facilities. And the third one is the foreman one of custodial services. And those will be adjusted based on our policy and regulations for adjustments for positions. What is the technology application specialist? It's a technology application specialist. It's a network uh, specialist position for the IT department. So we have three new IT people, basically. We have two. One yeah. is an instructional yeah. technology resource teacher that's going to be used to help us with our learning management system and the fact that we want to probably begin the school year with a hybrid learning model and the technology application specialist that uh, Ms. Forsman just explained. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Forsman, what is the percentage for the step increases on the teacher scale, except for when you get above the 29? Um, it will now be 34, sir. Hang on, let me get this slide to sharing and all that stuff. All right, there we go. Um, the, the teacher's salary scale, the new one, has uh, percentages between steps and they'll, it varies depending on the step. So for instance, since we're leaving an old scale that is flawed going to a new scale, the um, salary adjustments will run anywhere from two and a half percent up to five and a half percent depending upon where you sit on the scale currently. But the percentage between steps as far as them going from step two to step three will be incrementally next from now on the same. You see, I mean, we have to get from the old scale to the new scale, but once we're on the new scale, from two to three next year will be 1%. From three to four next year will be 1%. But going from the old scale two to the new scale three is going to be, for instance, 3.81% uh, between this year and next year. So, Mr. Minnick, you're going to have some variation in between the conversion of steps because our current scale was flawed and was not symmetric for equal amounts in between. In order to, to bring that so we have some uniformity, you're going to have a variation on the actual increase on some steps, but on the new scale, every step is incrementally equal. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Any other questions? Okay, next we need, uh, this is an action item, adoption of the proposed budget. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the proposed budget. I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mitnick. 
Board members, please vote. Chair Byram? Yes. Vice Chair Brooks-Buck? Yes. Member Jenkins? Yes. Member Mayo? Yes. Member Mitnick? Yes. Member Riddick? Yes. Member Story? No. Motion carried. Okay. And if there's no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank mm -hmm. you.